Hi, Andy here from Pure Energy with a short video about music licensing, which is a hot topic. As I've been wandering around on Facebook into various groups, I keep seeing myself getting tagged into posts. I seem to be the Martin Lewis of licensing for the fitness industry, it would appear. And I'm also seeing lots of misinformation, misunderstanding, and possibly people just ignoring what the reality is. Now, it's not for me to tell you what you have to do. I'm just here to advise you what you should be doing. At the end of the day, you will choose what you want to do, but it's worth being aware of the facts of the matter because if you do get caught, and lots of people are getting caught, I'm seeing it all the time, you will get fined and you will get added a 50% penalty on top of what you should have been playing. So it, it really is worth knowing the facts of the matter. Uh, also, one myth I'd like to just dispel because I see it all over the place is you can't use Spotify, Apple Music or Amazon in the gym or in a fitness class. Look at the terms of use on Spotify's legal stuff. It's for personal use only. You cannot use it in a class environment. It's the same reason why a pub can't just get a Sky subscription from a personal perspective and play in a pub. They have to get a business license. That you can use Spotify in a fitness environment, but you have to get a different license. So again, if you get caught on that front, you are breaking the law and you will get penalised. So why, in the first instance, do I have to pay as a fitness instructor or a gym to use music in group exercise classes? In very, very simple terms, it's because you are enhancing your product, your class with somebody else's music. It's called the secondary exploitation of music. If you buy music or you subscribe to Spotify and listen to it at home, play it at your barbecue, no problem. Absolutely fine. That's what it's there for. As soon as you start enhancing your product with someone else's music, that's where performance fees come in. So PPL and PRS are the two societies that work on behalf of the record labels in PPL sense and the music public publishers in PRS sense. Now, a lot I see lots of commentary about, oh, these people are evil, blah, blah, blah. They are just representing the record labels and the publishers, and they distribute the money back to record labels and publishers, who in turn distribute the money back to the artists and the songwriters. If the money didn't find its way back to the songwriters and the artists, they wouldn't be able to earn a living and they wouldn't make music. If they didn't make music, you couldn't deliver your classes. So that's just worth getting your head around. And I know it's easy to say, well, the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and Adele are making loads of money. Think about all the small artists they're trying to make a living through their money. So that's why you have to pay. So PPL collects on behalf of the performers. Now, every class you do, it's £1.67 plus VAT, okay? So when you deliver a group exercise class, wherever you may be, and you're using copyrighted music, that means it's buy a Dell or take that or whoever, you're paying £1.67 plus VAT every time you do that class. On the other side of the fence, you've got to pay PRS £1.84 plus VAT. So if I've got my maths correct, when you add the VAT in, that's £4.21 every time you pay a class. Now, obviously, you can claim your VAT back if you're VAT registered, but lots of small instructors are not. So that's what you need to understand. There is a reason why you have to pay to play copyrighted music in your class. The two societies are collecting money on behalf of the artists. Now, with the music license through PPLPRS, you're having to project how many classes you're going to do for the year, and generally, you're paying in advance. There may have been some changes to that, but that's generally the rule. So if you're choosing to play fully copyrighted music based on how many classes you're teaching, that's what you've got to, got to pay. If you're paying, playing sorry, PPL-free music, then you just have to pay the PRS element. Now, on PRS, it's worth just getting your head around this. A lot of venues, and this could be village halls or indeed gyms, they may think, we're covered, we've got a PRS license. It's, you've got to be aware there's two sorts of PRS license. So to play background music, that means on the gym floor, I've gone in, I'm lifting weights, I'm doing my thing, the music's playing in the background, that's a different license. That is called a core license. So that's for core music. And for a venue, that's based on their square footage. And if you are a reasonable sized gym, 
you're going to be paying about £600 a year. But by having that license doesn't mean you can play music in group exercise classes. That license is called the bolt-on license. So in the same way we've just discussed there, as an instructor around people and PRS, the venue must have a bolt-on license and pay that one pound eighty four plus uh, plus VAT. Um, so be careful when you're teaching because if you get inspected, oh yeah, now we've got a PRS license. You have to prove that it's a bolt-on license. So hopefully that helps you understand. And just to summarise. You can't use streaming platforms in gyms unless you're using a business license, and they are available, but it's more expensive, and you have two licenses to cover, PPL and PRS. With Pure Energy, we give you the choice. We have original artist music, we have PPL free music, or we have Pure Energy Go, where we've decided to deliver to retain all our rights. And so it's an all rights included service. Some would call that license free. So if you're using Pure Energy Go music, you have nothing to pay, which is quite a saving whilst having quality music. So look, hopefully that's helped. People will sort of cough and splutter and go, oh, it's not fair. It's just the way it is. That And, it, and trust me, it's only going to get tighter because the music industry has changed the way that artists, record labels and publishers try and realise money for their works because the physical product is dying off now. It's all about streaming and micro payments. And the thing with the fitness industry is we publish our timetables online and on social media, so it's very difficult to hide from what you're doing. So look, it's your call, it's your choice. Hopefully that's giving you the information you need to make the right decision. And at any time you've got any questions, please reach out to us on our Facebook groups, drop us a message, and I'm happy to advise and help you. Thank you. <laughs>